Empty. 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 Y'all eat like a bunch of pigs. Actually, they're eating exactly like I want them to eat. They're putting on tons of weight, and uh, I think one more barrel of corn is uh, probably gonna do it for them. Y'all check this out. I got stung by something this morning. I don't even know what it was. I only caught a glimpse of it. It was a big black wasp or hornet looking thing. And I got stung on that right thumb. Look at how big it's swollen up. I know I've done videos in the past about the chicken feed that I mix and I was mixing up my own chicken food for a while. It was a mixture of wheat and oats and corn and soybean meal and it worked okay. They wasted a ton of it. I would come in here and they would just have the floor just covered up around the feeder with this food. Um, I mean, it was okay. They laid eggs with it. They seemed to like it okay, but they just wasted a ton of it. And on top of that, it was just kind of fiddly to do and it just it ended up not being worth it for me so I have switched back to plain old producers producers pride 16% layer feed from tractor supply I know that YouTube was basically apocalyptic apocalyptic about this stuff several months ago that the chickens stopped laying eggs with it uh, they lay eggs fine with this so anyway that's what I'm using it's a lot more convenient and uh, I think my chickens are about to run out the door oh the chickens already ran out the door Jump, 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 jump. You gotta jump. Not gonna jump, are you? For the chicken feed, it just came down to a matter of convenience and really finances. I mean, I don't think I was saving a lot of money mixing my own chicken feed in the first place. If any, and if they were wasting all of that, I was saving even less, and I'm not so sure that I was saving anything in the first place. So this just makes a lot more sense. They're not particularly hungry yet because they're thirsty. I'm planning on picking up a pickle barrel today to get these pigs set up with a water or two. That little five gallon bucket is really the bucket that I had tried to use as like a worming bucket to put the medication in to not have to waste a ton of medication in the big barrel. Works really good for the little pigs, not so great for the big ones because they just knock it over basically immediately. I think I'm gonna start storing my soybean meal in this barrel. This barrel was used to keep uh, broiler chicken feed in. Let's let the pigs have the last of the broiler feed.
Unfortunately, that barrel only held about three bags. Let's try a second barrel. Looks like we got a really nice batch, batch of corn this time around. It is nice, very, very clean, very pretty corn. I don't see any weevils or anything like that. Really pretty batch of corn. I have gotten it before where it would be full of, um, well not full, but it would have some sticks and that kind of thing. And I have seen a cuckleburra or two in this batch, but as long as that kind of stuff is not particularly excessive, it's fine. I did get a batch one time that had peanuts in it and uh, not just a few peanuts, it had quite a few peanuts in it, um, but that was just extra protein for the pigs, no big deal. But what I'll do is I'll take this corn, I'll grind it up, I'll mix it up with some soybean meal and some of these minerals. And what I end up with is a complete 16 or so percent protein pig feed that they can eat basically from the beginning until the end at about a 30% discount off of pre-made bag feed. This is kind of the proof of that pig feed that I've been making. So these pigs right here are just about ready to go. And there's one over there in the waller right now. He is 250 plus at this point there. They were born around February 1st and they're almost six months old. Uh, one of these pink ones is 220 or 219. Another one's 208. And our breeder, I did not weigh for obvious reasons. And uh, she is most likely over 200 at this point. So uh, almost six months and they have put on this much weight so what i have done at this point i've gotten one more barrel of corn two more bags of soybean meal and uh, whatever minerals that i have and that should make about 530 or so pounds of feed uh, when it's gone uh, they are they are headed out it's time to start knocking out some of these monster oak rounds and making them into firewood Got to get some of this dirt out of the way down here. There's, it won't let the, it won't let the, uh, the arm on the splitter go down right. 
and we may have to postpone this project. There's some thunderstorms moving in. Yeah. I think we'll have a break in this weather at some point, but while we're waiting, we can go ahead and make a pig waterer. Before we start on this barrel, I wanna show y'all something that I have never, ever seen before. Look at this snail. It looks like a snail in like a hermit crab shell or something, and I looked it up, and these are actually called amber snails, and I have never once seen one of these. All right, dude, you got to go somewhere else. I can't get him off of here without ripping him in half, so I'm just going to put him over here and hope he gets off by himself while I work on the barrel. Get on that log or something. So I thought that this was a pickle barrel, but the label says temporarily preserved cucumbers. And look, I got some freebies in there. So here's what I want to do here. I want to take these nipples. I've got four of these right here, and I'm going to put them into this barrel and make a pig water. This I have found is pretty much the easiest way to water pigs. You just fill it up and had depending on how many pigs you have several days later, you come back and fill it up again. It's very, very hands off and I like it. It keeps them in fresh water all the time. But what I'm going to do just for added support, usually would put like a bulkhead or something like that in this uh, on each side of these threads right here but here's what I found instead I'm just gonna take these little tiny washers right here I don't I know there's a name for these little star washers I guess or nuts I guess is what they are and I'm gonna put one right here on this nipple and the other one right there and basically just sandwich the barrel between those two and that'll give me some more support i've got two barrels already that are in use one of them uh, it, that is on its second batch of pigs and those out there are just threaded directly into the side of these barrels that's the only support that it's got and they have worked fine but they're just a little bit flimsy so i'm just gonna give this one some added support and i think that'll be a lot better it's just a three quarter inch paddle bit here and i'm going to put these 10 inches from the bottom of the barrel 10 inches kind of seems to be the sweet spot this will be low enough for right now when they are piglets and once they get a little bit older i can uh, set this up on a concrete blocks and that'll get it up to about 18 or so inches which will be great for yellow jackets which will be great for uh, when they get much larger Yeah, I'll tell you what, let me double check that to make sure I got the right size, and I did. Don't want to drill all four holes wrong. And there's four handles in the top of this barrel here, and I'm just using those handles as a guide on where to put these, these nipples. Four drinkers with six pigs will cut down uh, quite a bit on the amount of fighting around the water barrel. If I just had one barrel with one nipple, they would be fighting all the time. Uh, four will definitely, definitely relieve some of that pressure. start
And here on the inside of the barrel, I'll just make sure this is nice and dry and then put some silicone on it. And this silicone, I'll put it on the inside and that'll just, of course, make sure that it doesn't leak around those, around those threads there. I don't know if it's an inconsistency with those nipples or those nuts that I bought, but uh, only about three out of the four of those would tighten down real good on the inside. So there may be a better solution for something to put on those threads, but I'm, I'm thinking that's gonna be a whole lot better than just screwing them right into the barrel. I can tell that that is a whole lot stronger than just threading them right directly into the barrel. And the beauty of these barrels and these nipples is even if this doesn't work, uh, I can always take this out and figure something else out. It's not like it's a loss if this comes out or the pigs yank it out or if it doesn't work. But that's a pretty strong system. We'll just see how it works. Um, it'll take about 30 minutes for this silicone to be ready to put water into. So let's go see if we can get some of these logs split up while we wait. All right, we're going to put that on pause again. And uh, we're going to fly a helicopter. You want to fly a helicopter? Yeah. I was... Does it, go, uh, does it go how high the trees are? It probably won't go that high. I was about to go do the logs and he came running outside and requested to do this. So we're going to take a little pause here. You remember how to put these together? No, I don't. Now we got to get a balloon on there. These make a lot of noise, don't they? Yeah, when do they make noise? They just do. Hey guys, these make a lot of noise. That's right. All right, let it go. You got it. <laughs> they was trying to fly and did it. So this is the small end of this round right here and it is 27 <clears throat> by 22 and a half. And I don't have a really good way to handle this. So I'm gonna take my splitting axe and see if I can just get this in half and I'll be able to handle it a little bit better. This is some knotty stuff though, so I'm not sure if that's gonna work or not. <laughs> that was a maul. Let's see if we can get a just a standard splitting axe in there. All right, I could probably fight that for another half hour, but I need some hydraulic power in this thing. No, oh, it'll be worth it when it's 30 degrees and I'm by the fire. Had to remind myself. <laughs>
splitter managed to get that log apart or that round apart and look at all of that that it produced that is a ton of firewood just in that one round there some of it's pretty some of it's a little bit punky or doty or whatever you want to call it but uh, i'll do what i can with that and a lot of it's pretty gnarly but that kind of stuff right there should produce a lot of btus in the fireplace so yeah that one was a challenge So we'll knock these two out and then see if we can get the water into the pigs. These are, I guess, just a little bit smaller than that first one. This is looking like 24 by 28. Okay, probably the same size then. It's still pretty big. The other one's a little bit smaller, but I want to try to split this in half manually so that I only have to deal with half of the weight getting it over there to the splitter. That was just way too much trying to manhandle this entire thing. So let's let's do what we can to get this split up uh, by hand. This one's not quite as gnarly as that first one, so it may come apart a little bit easier. I don't know if y'all can see that, but the wedge is actually going down maybe an inch and then popping right back out. This is it. So this next one might be a little problematic. This is actually a crotch right here. You can see where a big limb came out right there and right there. There's heart right there and heart right there. So I don't know how this is gonna work out. Oh yeah, right. That was just three logs and I got a ton of firewood out of this. It finished out this row right here, which I'll use first this coming winter and started out on another row as well. This is, I think this is 11 feet, 11 and a half feet or something like that across. But yeah, that is a that is a lot of firewood just out of those three pieces. I can't say that that was a ton of fun. Those pieces are so big and so heavy, but man, they do they do produce a lot of firewood, so it ends up being worth it. And it'll be definitely be worth it this winter when it's cold outside and I've got a fire going in the fireplace. Let's check on the pig feeder and see if we can get it in the pen. Silicone should be ready on this and our little snail 
crawled off into the grass or onto that log or somewhere. I really don't know. Either way, he's gone. So it's clear to use this stuff. You gotta put these things out of reach or they'll have a field day with them. Won't y'all? They haven't quite warmed up to me yet. Not sure how much I've talked about this on the channel. I'm sure I've talked about it some, but that one right there, that little spotted one, is an intact bore right there. The one going in the mud pit right now. That's an intact bore. And our plan for him is to grow him out and let him mate with uh, the gilt that we have in the other pen that I showed y'all earlier. We've named him Rooster, and he is about 75% Yorkshire and about 25% Duroc. Uh, the gilt that we plan on mating him with is almost 100% Yorkshire. Yorkshire with some Berkshire mixed Berkshire mixed in so um, I'm trying to keep those Yorkshire genetics because these pigs that we've got over there that I showed y'all earlier the really big ones man they have just been the best pigs um, as far as growth and behavior I suppose goes so that's kind of our plan our plan is to mate pigs and to uh, sell the feeder pigs and I don't know. We'll just see what happens, but that's kind of our plan as of now. All right, our water level is way above the level of these nipples, so let's check for leaks. It's looking good there. Good there. Good there. And oh, come on, there's got to be one leaking. Something ain't right. Yep, I was right. <laughs> it's always going to be one that's leaking. That one's got a very slight leak. And, um, mm. Maybe once it gets drained, I'll, I'll fix that, but I wonder if that's the one that was kind of loose. I'm not going to fill it all the way up because these pigs are still very small. They're not drinking a ton as compared to the other pigs, so I don't want to have a ton of water just sitting in there kind of stagnant. Well, guys, that is going to do it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, it's going to be a whole lot easier in this pig pen now, now that I've got a large source of water, and it's always so much better for the pigs if they've got just a steady, constant supply of fresh water. So, so that's a big improvement there. I'll see y'all on the next one. Thank y'all for watching. Can you tell everybody who Gidget is? Gidget, so you know baby cat, but she's black and white and she has the collar, but she didn't have the collar before. But then she had a collar when she bought it, but then it was black and white, but Get just with my tail on the bottom, but no squeaks or ears. How much coffee did you have this morning? I didn't have coffee this morning. Okay, can you show us Gidget? That's Gidget. What's Gidget doing? Run into the corn. She ran into the corn. Now she's here. You didn't love her, did you? Did you? Oh!